Nice. We go on to the Shield of Achilles. Now, oh, solid chapter. Yeah, I've been teasing for a little bit that there's these two chapters coming up. This is the first of two chapters in which they make Achilles new armor, and then in the next chapter, he puts it on. Mm. Um, <laughs> we love to see it. <laughs> yes, every line. <laughs> I can't miss this. But before, we do have a really, really important heart wrenching scene when Achilles finds out that Patroclus is dead. Oh. Uh, so that we're going to see. It's a lot. It's very, it's a lot. Uh, is this in the other book that you were talking about? The Song of Achilles, was it? Yeah. Oh. Uh, actually, it, I'm going to that book. Oh, Sorry. that book is so good. It destroyed me because I didn't know That's any the Iliad. And so I didn't know that they were gonna die <laughs> and, um, oh, no. <laughs> you were just like right there with Achilles <laughs> dying uh, yeah no. so let's get our hearts broken I'm dying well well the chocolate no. is dead <laughs> the chocolate is dead <laughs> Oh, just like in the movie. Just like in the movie. <laughs> just like Troy. Just, you know, they did such a good job rephrasing the movie in this book. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they really captured all the good points from the movie. adaptation of the, <laughs> the, the famous classic movie, Troy. <laughs> the famous classic Troy from 2000. Man, it's gone. Sorry. <laughs> The shield of Achilles. So the men fought on like a mass of whirling fire as swift Antilochus, the messenger, raced the message toward Achilles. Sheltered under his curving beaked ships, he found him, foreboding deep down all that had come to pass. Agonizing now, Achilles probed his own great heart. Why? Why? Our long-haired Achaeans routed again, driven in terror off the plain to crowd the ships. But why? Dear gods, don't bring past the grief that haunts my heart. The prophecy that mother revealed to me one time. She said the best of the Myrmidons, while I lived, would fall at Trojan hands and leave the light of day. And now he's dead. I know it. My gallant son, my headstrong friend. And I told Petroclus Kili, once you've beaten off the lethal fire, quick, come back to the ships. You must not battle Hector. As such fear, um. <laughs> <laughs> We've all been there. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so he, this is just like total anxiety moment. Um, mm. Like someone calls and you assume the worst. So he's like, mm. oh my God, Petroclus is dead. And yeah, he's right. Mm. As such oh, yeah. I may have overdone the crying part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. We're all psyched. <laughs> <laughs> As such fears went churning through his mind, the warlord Nestor's son drew him now, streaming warm tears to give the dreaded message. Ah, son of royal Peleus, what you must hear from me, what painful news. Would to God it had never happened. Patroclus has fallen. They're fighting over his corpse, his stripped naked. Hector with that flashing helmet. Hector has your arms. So the captain reported, and a black cloud of grief came shrouding over Achilles. Both hands clawing the ground for soot and filth, he poured it over his head, fouled his handsome face, and black ashes settled onto his fresh, clean war shirt. Overpowered in all his power, sprawled in the dust, Achilles lay there fallen, tearing his hair, defiling it with his own hands. And the woman, the women he and Patroclus carried off as captives caught the grief in their hearts and keened and wailed. Out of the tents they ran to ring the great Achilles. All of them beat their breasts with clenched fists, sank to the ground. Each woman's knees gave way. And Telachus kneeling near, weeping uncontrollably, clutched Achilles' hands as he wept his proud heart out for fear he would slash his throat with an iron blade. So he's afraid that Achilles is going to kill himself. 
And so he kneels down beside him so that he can stop him if he goes to do it. Achilles suddenly loosed a terrible, wrenching cry, and his noble mother heard him, seated near her father, the old man of the sea, in the salt green depths, and she cried out in turn. And immortal sea nymphs gathered round their sisters, all the Nereids dwelling down the sounding depths. They all came rushing now. He goes on to list like 50 Nereids. Um, we're going to skip that. <laughs> Can I ask one thing? Yeah. Is there anything, like, I guess, I, I don't know if you know this, but what was the concession of suicide around this area, around this era? It's a good question. I don't know. Um, I doubt it was something favorable. Um, <laughs> it's probably not good. But it's obviously something that happened. It happened. Right, right, right always so right. yeah what we see soon is that achilles tries to do suicide by battle more or less he sees oh. through, um hector and he's like i don't care if hector is gonna kill me i just don't so that's pretty metal were you looking up suicide in ancient greece it just says that um suicide is justified if the gods give the sign for an individual's departure Otherwise, it's not acceptable. Oh. If the gods literally so say, kill it, yourself. So, <laughs> yeah. And if you can justify it by being like, yeah, Zeus told me to, then. Why, the gods, like, oh. why wouldn't, at that point, they just kill them? Yeah, right? <laughs> this trolls one. So all of the Nereids, in one morning chorus, beat their breasts as Thetis, Achilles' mother, launched the dirge. Hear me, sisters, daughters of Nereus, so you all will know it well. Listen to all the sorrows welling in my heart. I am agony, mother of grief and greatness. Oh, my child. Yes, I gave birth to a flawless, mighty son, the splendor of heroes, and he shot up like a young branch. Like a fine tree, I reared him, the orchard's crowning glory, but only to send him off in the beak ships to Troy to battle Trojans. Never again will I embrace him striding home through the doors of Peleus's house. And long as I have him with me, still alive, looking into the sunlight, he is racked with anguish, and I, I go to his side. Nothing I can do can help him. Nothing. But go I shall to see my darling boy, to hear what grief has come to break his heart while he holds back from battle. Yeah, so Thetis can hear the grief in his voice, but she doesn't exactly know what's wrong. She can guess uh, based off the prophecies that she's heard, but she's going to go and figure out what's up. So Thetis cried as she left the cave and her sisters swam up with her, all in a tide of tears and billowing round them now. The ground swell heaved open. And once they reached the fertile land of Troy, they all streamed ashore, row on row, in a long, long portage, the sea nymphs, filing up where the Myrmidon ships lay hauled, clustered closely round the great runner Achilles. As he groaned from the depths, his mother rose before him, and sobbing a sharp cry, cradled her son's head in her hands, and her words were all compassion, winging pity. My child, why in tears? What sorrow has touched your heart? Tell me, please, don't harbor it deep inside you. Zeus has accomplished everything you wanted, just as you raised your hands and prayed that day. All the sons of Achaea are pinned against the ships, and all for want of you. They suffer shattering losses. Yeah, this is the moment where it's like the monkey's paw. It's like, dude, you wanted this. Right? Mm -hmm. You prayed for this. You wished for this. Uh, she's not saying it like that, but that is kind yeah. of a vibe. It's kind of hurtful. <laughs> it's like, yeah. You could have waited like two days. <laughs> no. <laughs> that is the worst moment, roasted. <laughs> and, and groaning deeply, the matchless runner answered, Oh, dear mother, true, all those burning desires Olympian Zeus has brought to pass for me. But why joy to me now? My dear comrades dead, Patroclus, the man I love beyond all other comrades. Love as my own life, I've lost him. 
Hector's killed him. Stripped the gigantic armor off his back. A marvel to behold. My, <laughs> what is that about your armor? My burnished beard. <laughs> <laughs> so about nice. how nice and pretty his armor is. <laughs> my armor is so <laughs> nice. <laughs> Oh my god. Radiant gifts of gods. Oh my god, presented Peleus. That day they throw you into a mortal's marriage bed. I wish you'd linger deep with the deathless sea nymphs, lived at ease, and Peleus carried home a mortal bride. But now, as it is, sorrows, unending sorrows, must surge within your heart as well. For your own son's death, never again will you embrace him striding home. My sp spirit rebels. I've lost the will to live, to take my stand in the world of men. Unless, before all else, Hector is battered down by my spear and gasps away his life. The blood price for Petroclus. Mm. Man eh? Man Etius? What is it? Yeah, Man Etius. Yeah. Man Etius? Man I'm probably saying it wrong. It doesn't matter. It just. <laughs> oh, Matt Etius, gallant son, he's killed and stripped. Bethita's answered, warning through her tears. Okay, wait, can I just go back for one second? <laughs> yeah. Okay, so <laughs> just to clarify, so in this last bit, Achilles is like, just throws, he's like, oh, I'm really sad, Patroclus, my armor. And then just in the middle there, he's like, I wish you and dad hadn't gotten together because then I wouldn't be alive for the suffering. Is that what he's throwing down? Okay. <laughs> I wish I had never been born. Typical. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. So his new motive comes to light here. Um, basically, I've, he says, I've lost the will to live unless I can kill Hector. Like, that okay. would make me happy. Um, <laughs> we know that it won't because we've all seen movies, but that's his goal. We've all seen a movie, yes. No, yes. I haven't seen the movie. No, not, I just mean like movies. Like, this is oh, any movie? <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> Wait, you haven't seen a movie? No, okay. I haven't seen Troy. <laughs> I thought you saw Troy. No. Eh? I I've been it? watching our movies, like our videos. <laughs> that's how oh. I the recap. <laughs> Oh, I thought you. Oh. And you think that every week she was just waiting to watch Troy again? So that she could <laughs> 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 every week so I can recap. Time for my week for two hours. Watch. Oh my god. Dude, I'm actually so excited for us to watch Troy. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Roll session. Roll session. Okay, so back to mom. <laughs> yeah. Okay. okay. You're doomed. Wait, <laughs> you want to kill <laughs> <laughs> You're doomed to a short life, my son, from all you say. For hard on the heels of Hector's death, your death must come at once. Jesus. Then let me die at once. Achilles burst out despairing. Since it was not my fate to save my dearest comrade from his death, look. A world away from his fatherland he's perished, lacking me, my fighting strength to defend them all. But now, since I shall not return to my fatherland, nor did I bring one ray of hope to my Petroclus, nor the rest of all my steadfast comrades, countless ranks struck down by mighty Hector. No, no, here I sit by the ships, a useless dead weight on the good green earth. I... No man my equal among the bronze-armed bronze Achaeans. Not in battle. Only in wars of words that others win. <laughs> He's like, I'm dumb. <laughs> Only Cyprus <laughs> could die from the lives of gods and men. An anger that drives the sanest man to flare and outrage. Bitter gall, sweeter than dripping streams of honey. That swarms in people's chests and blinds like smoke. Just like the anger Agamemnon, king of men, has roused within me now. Enough. Let bygones be bygones. Done is done. Despite my anguish, I will beat it down. The fury mounting inside me, down by force. But I'll go and meet that murderer head on, that Hector who destroyed the dearest life I know. For my own death, I'll meet it freely, whenever Zeus and the other deathless gods would like to bring it on. Not even Heracles fled his death. For all his power, favorite son as he was to the father Zeus the king. 
fate crushed him, and Hera's savage anger. And I too, if the same fate waits for me, I'll lie in peace. Once I've gone down to death. But now, for the moment, let me seize great glory and drive some woman of Troy or deep-breasted Darden to claw with both hands at her, at her tender cheeks and wipe away her burning tears as the sobs come choking from her throat. They'll learn that I refrain from a war a, lo- a good long time. Don't try to hold me back from the fighting, mother. Love me as you do. You can't persuade me now. That's super important because he's, this. I mean, since book one, Achilles has been not fighting, very strong and stubborn against that. I'm not forgiving Agamemnon. I'm not fighting. And here mm-hmm. he just, let bygones be, got, be bygones. Done is done. I'll beat mm-hmm. down my anger. I'm going to go meet that murderer head on. I mean, this is like a huge change in right. the book. It's huge. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So actually, I feel like it's really well made, though. Like this, this monologue makes sense. Mm-hmm. But that's what it took in the end. Um, because, yeah, I mean, Agamemnon just couldn't apologize well enough to sate him. But mm-hmm. the death of Patroclus is what it took to get him back into battle. Mm-hmm. But he doesn't really care about Troy. He just cares about killing Hector. Yeah. Um, that said, if he does kill Hector, that will make taking Troy a hell of a lot easier. Um, mm-hmm. So we'll see what happens. The mm-hmm. goddess, <laughs> the <laughs> goddess of the glistening feet, replied. <laughs> Was that still his mom? Yeah. <laughs> With the nice feet. I got great feet. Yes. <laughs> never, never forget those feet. <laughs> never forget. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, my son, you're right. No coward's work to save your exhausted friends from heading from headlong death. But your own handsome war gear lies in Trojan hands, bronze and burnished, and Hector in that flashing helmet. Hector glories in your armor, strapped across his back. Not that he will not that he will glory in it long, I tell you. His own destruction hovers near him now. Wait, don't fling yourself in the grind of battle yet. Not till you see me coming back with your own eyes. Tomorrow, I will return to you with the rising sun, bearing splendid arms from Hephaestus. Hephaestus, god of fire. Yes, so she's going... You, Marat's boy, Hephaestus. (laughs) I love Hephaestus. (laughs) <laughs> um, to make him new armor, which is great. Mm-hmm. We're going back to Patroclus. We haven't quite won him yet. As for Patroclus, there seemed no hope that the Achaeans could drag the corpse of Achilles' comrade out of range. Again, the Trojan troops and teams overtook the body with Hector, son of Priam, storming fierce as fire. Three times, illustrious Hector shouted for support, seized his feet from behind, wild to drag him off, and three times the Aintes, the Ajaxes, armed in battle fury, fought him off the corpse. So they're fighting for Patroclus' corpse. And then Iris comes down, down to Achilles. Says, to arm son of Peleus, most terrifying man alive. Oh. Defend Patroclus, it's all for him. This merciless battle pitched before the ships. They're mauling each other now. Achaean struggling to save the corpse from harm. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, 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 uh. And Achilles says, who sent you? She says, Hera. Achilles says, how can I go to war? The Trojans have my gear. I know no other armor. His gear can no I armor. <laughs> Man, he's a lucky armor. And she says, all you have to do is show yourself to the Trojans. They will be struck with fear at the sight of you. They might hold off from attack. Then Achilles' sons will get second wind and they can take Patroclus back to you. Oh. So Iris, racing the wind, went veering off as Achilles, Zeus's favorite fighter, now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you're my new favorite. I'm tired of the moment. <laughs> For the moment. Rose up now, and over his powerful shoulder, Pallas slung the shield, the tremendous storm shield with all its tassels flaring, and crowning its, his head, the goddess swept a golden cloud, and from it she let a fire to blaze across the field. So Athena comes down to help him out. She lends Achilles his, her shield and she sets a giant crown of fire to like blaze above his head. So he looks That's horrifying. Sick. Yeah. Sick. Yeah. 
So there he rose and loosed an enormous cry, and off in the distance, Athena, Pallas Athena, shrieked out too and drove unearthly panic through the Trojans. Piercing loud as the trumpet's battle cry that blasts from murderous raiding armies ringed around some city, so piercing now the cry that broke from Aesides, which is another name for Achilles. <laughs> and Trojans. Wait, 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 what? 18 chapters in. Oh, by the way. The brazing voice of Aesides, all their spirits quaked, even sleek-maned horses, sensing death in the wind, slewed their chariots round, and charioteers were struck dumb when they saw that fire. Relentless, terrible, burst from the proud-hearted Achilles' head, blazing as fiery-eyed Athena fueled the flames. Three times the brilliant Achilles gave his great war cry over the trench, three times the Trojans and famous allies whirled in panic, and twelve of their finest fighters died then and there. Crushed by chariots, and peeled on their own spears. And now, the exultant Argive sealed the chance to drag Patroclus's body quickly out of range, and laid him on a litter. Standing round him, loving comrades mourned, and the swift runner Achilles joined them, grieving, weeping warm tears when he saw his steadfast comrade lying dead on the bier, mauled by tearing bronze, the man he sent to war with team and chariot, but never welcomed home again alive. Mm. And then Hera makes a sunset. Um, <laughs> and the Trojans meet, um, and they try to figure out what to do next, because they do see Achilles, they know he doesn't have armor, it's a tricky situation. Polydamas, who's been around a few times, high-ranking Trojan, has some advice for Hector. And now with all goodwill, Polydamas rose and spoke. Weigh both sides of the crisis well, my friend. What I urge is this, draw back to the city now. Don't wait for the holy dawn to find us here afield, ranged by the ships. We're too far from our walls. As long as that man kept raging at Royal like a Memnon, the Argive troops were easier game to battle down. I too was glad to camp the night in the shipways, hope soaring to seize their heavy rolling hulls. But now racing Achilles makes my blood run cold. So wild the man's fury, he will never rest content. Holding out on the plain where Trojans and Argives met halfway, exchanging blows in the savage onset. Never. He will fight for our wives, for Troy itself. So retreat to Troy. Trust me, we will face disaster. Now, for the moment, the bracing God-sent knight has stopped the swift Achilles in his tracks, but let him catch his lingering here tomorrow, just as he rises up in arms. There may be some who will sense his fighting spirit all too well. You'll thank your stars to get back to sacred Troy, whoever escapes him. Dogs and birds will have their fill of Trojan flesh by heaven. Battalions of Trojans. Pray God such grief will never reach my ears. So follow my advice, hard as it may seem. Tonight, conserve our strength in the meeting place. And the great walls and gates and timbered doors we have, well planned, massive and bolted tight, will shield the city. But tomorrow at daybreak, armed at the hilt of battle, we man the towering ramparts, all the worse for him if Achilles wants to venture forth from the fleet, fight us round our walls. Back to the ships he'll go, once he's lashed the power out of his rippling stallions, whipping them back and forth beneath our city walls. Not even his fury will let him crash our gates. He'll never plunder Troy. Sooner the racing dogs will eat him raw. So Hector doesn't super have that. He doesn't like the idea of being caged inside those walls, stuck inside the city, fighting against an attack. He says, you know, sometimes Zeus is with us. Zeus may have us again. And he also doubts that it really was Achilles. After all, the last time they saw Achilles, it was Patroclus. So this may not be Achilles as well. <laughs> Imagine they just pulled a double bluff. It's your turn. Get in that armor. Go, 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 go. Like there never was an Achilles. <laughs> oh, you know, it was Santa Claus, you know? It's just like a figment of everyone's imagination. 
A ploy by Zeus, probably. <laughs> <laughs> what about a person? The Trojans give applause to Hector's, what the book calls Hector's ruinous tactics, none to Polydamas, who gave them sound advice. The book kind of implies that if they did follow Polydamas' plan, uh, mm. the Trojans would be in a much better position by the end of the war, but they're not. Yeah. And but who cares about Polydamas? Who cares yeah. about Polydamas? All night long, the Argives raised Patroclus' dirge, and Achilles led them now in a throbbing chant of sorrow, laying his man-killing hands on his great friend's chest, convulsed with bursts of grief. Like a bearded lion whose pride of cubs a deer hunter has snatched away out of some thick woods, and back he comes too late, and his heart breaks, but he courses after the hunter, hot on the tracks, down glen on twisting glen. Where can he find him? Gripped by piercing rage. So Achilles groaned deeply, crying out to his myrmidons. Oh, my captains, how empty the promise I let fall that day I reassured many, many, many in, in, in his house. I promised the king I'd bring him back to his son, home to Opois, covered in glory. Troy sacked, hauling his rightful share of plunder home. Oh. But Zeus will never accomplish all our best laid plans. Look at us, both doomed to stain red with our blood, the same plot of earth. A world away in Troy, for not even I will voyage home again. Never. No embrace in his halls from the old horseman Peleus, nor from mother, Thetis. This alien earth I stride will hold me down at last. But now, Patroclus, since I will follow you underneath the ground, I shall not bury you. No, not till I drag back here the gear and head of Hector, who slaughtered you, my friend. Great-hearted friend. Here in front of your flaming pyre, I'll cut the throats of a dozen sons of Troy in all their shining glory, venting my rage on them for your destruction. Till then, you lie as you are beside my beak ships, and round you the Trojan women and deep, deep-breasted Dardans will mourn you night and day, weeping burning tears. Women, we fought to win, strong hands and heavy lance, whenever we sacked rich cities held by mortal men. Right, so after all this talk of how important it is to get Patroclus' body back for proper burial, Achilles refuses to have a proper burial until he has killed Hector and gotten 12 beautiful sons of Troy to slaughter uh, as sacrifices on Patroclus' grave. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, sacrifices are a typical way to... Pray, uh, please these gods. We've seen a lot of sacrifices. Um, human sacrifices are like a big deal and not that common. Um, so this is a huge deal. But it's also like not that great considering, I mean, how long is it going to take for him to kill Hector? He hasn't died in nine years. It's so like, um, so he's going to let Patroclus kind of rot in his tent. <laughs> So they clean Patroclus' body, bathe it, clean it up, make it look good, whatever. Zeus is like, well, Hera, good job. We've got Achilles on his feet. He's going to be fighting and whatever. Zeus <laughs> hmm. <laughs> is very eloquent with his words. And Hera's like, me? I, I didn't want this. I'm on your side. And he's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 As the king and queen provoked each other, oh. glistening footed Thetis reached Hephaestus's house. Indestructible, bright as stars, shining among the gods, built of bronze by the crippled smith with his own hands. There she found him, sweating, wheeling round the bellows, pressing the work on twenty three legged cauldrons, an array to ring the walls inside his mansion. He bolted golden wheels to the legs of each cauldron, so all on their own speed, at a nod from him, they could roll to halls where the gods convene, then roll right home again, a marvel to behold. But not quite finished yet. The gods still had to attach the inlaid handles. There he was just fitting, beating in the rivets, and he bent to the work with all his craft and cunning. Thetis, on her glistening feet, drew near the smith. But Charis saw her first, Charis coming forward, Life and lovely in all her glittering headdress, the grace the illustrious crippled smith had married. In some myths, he's married to Aphrodite. In this one, he's married to a grace. Approaching Thetis, she caught her hand and spoke her name. 
Thetis of the flowing robes, what brings you to our house? Wow, please <laughs> come in, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Skipping down a bit. Um, Marat, it's your birthday. Do you also want to be your boy, Hephaestus? You're my boy, yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Yo, do you call me heavy? And the famous... <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> you can't, man. You're heavy. Call me heavy. Heifer. <laughs> heifer. I'll take heifer. Oh, man. David and the heifer. famous crippled smith exclaimed warmly. I'm crippled. Oh. Thetis here, and then a wondrous honored goddess comes to grace our house. Thetis saved my life when the moral pain came on me after my great fall. Thanks to my mother's will, the brazen bitch, she wanted to hide me because I was crippled. What shattering anguish I'd have suffered then if Thetis had not taken me to her breast. Euronimo! Euronimo! <laughs> Honor of Ocean Stream that runs around the world. Nine years I live with both forging bronze by the trove, elegant brooches, whorled pins, necklaces, chokers, chains. There in the vaulted cave and round us ocean's currents, swirled in a foaming, roaring rush that never died. And now, and no one knew. Not a single god or mortal. Only Thetis and Euronimo knew. They saved me. And here in Thetis now, in our own house. So I must do all I can to pay her back. The price for all the life she saved. The nymph of the sea with sleek and lustrous locks. Quickly set before her stranger's generous fate. While I put away my bellows and all my tools. Okay. Have a he starts to put away his stuff, and handmaids ran to attend their master, all cast in gold, but a match for the living, breathing girls. Intelligence fills their hearts, voice, and strength in their frames. From the deathless gods, they've learned their works of hand. I love this because it's like the chapter in Hamlet when pirates show up for half a second. <laughs> yeah, right. This is the moment in the Iliad when robots show up for half a second. <laughs> yeah. There's these things, by the way. We're not going to spend too much time on this. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> it's not that important. There are robots. Um, there are robots. <laughs> we got robots. Don't question it. Don't question it. Oh, man. Anyway. I, was like, I so, would love like, an offshoot of this just about these robots. Yeah. Um, it's, good. um... It's, um... <laughs> you know, the movie with the robots. <laughs> <laughs> I robot. Robots. Good, good one. Yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the. Star the Wars. Star Wars. Never mind. It would be a hot, actually. Star Wars spin off of <laughs> all of this. Take on the Iliad. I'd watch that. Oh. I'd for sure watch that. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, so Thetis explains basically the whole story that we read so far. <laughs> Middle okay. of 42. She says, Give me my son. Sorry. She says, give my son, he won't live long, a shield and helmet in tooled greaves with ankle straps and armor for his chest. All that he had was lost, lost when the Trojans killed his steadfast friend. Now he lies on the ground. His heart is breaking. And the famous crippled smith replied, Courage, anguish for all that armor. Sweep it from your mind. If only I could hide him away from pain and death. That day his grim destiny comes to take Achilles. As surely as glorious armor shall be his, armor that any man in the world of men will marvel at through all the years to come. Whoever sees his splendor. With that, he left her there and made for his bellows, turning them on the fire, commanding. Work, to work. And the bellows, all 20, blew on the crucibles, breathing with all degrees of shooting fiery heat. As the god hurried on, a blast for the heavy work. A quick breath for the light, all precisely gauged to the god of fire's wish and pace of the work at hand. Bronze he flung in the blaze, tough, durable bronze, and tin in priceless gold and silver. And then, planting the huge anvil upon its block, he gripped his mighty hammer in one hand, the other gripped his tongs. He starts by making the shield. This goes on for a while. Um... He makes the shield, he does a bunch of engravings on it um, of constellations and various scenes from 
Greek mythology that's even older than this Greek mythology. Um, then he makes the helmet, the chest plate, all of it. He makes the armor. It's all beautiful. <laughs> it's all beautiful. It's interesting. Uh, the shield especially is very, very lovely. All kinds of drawings and doodles on it. <laughs> doodles? <laughs> He's just like, they're like, all right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> He just is like, yeah, we're not in any rush or anything. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, no, I just do a lot. Of <laughs> I just got to finish my super S. <laughs> yeah, that's the S. <laughs> cool. Oh, it's like sick. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's like shepherds um, herding cattle, like drawn on the field. <laughs> there's, I'll put some cows in there. Let's put some shepherds. Let's put some trees. But in any case, he... So all that's about the shield. And once, this is on the last page, 47. Once the god had made that great and massive shield, he made Achilles a breastplate, brighter than gleaming fire. He made him a sturdy helmet to fit the fighter's temples. Beautiful burnished work and raised its golden crest and made him greaves of flexing, pliant tin. Now, when the famous crippled smith had finished off that grand array of armor, lifting it in his arms, he laid it all at the feet of Achilles' mother, Thetis and down she flashed like a hawk from snowy Mount Olympus, bearing the brilliant gear, the god of fire's gift. Ooh, that was pretty sick. That's that. So Achilles has some beautiful new armor, and guess what? Next time we get to see him put it on. Makeover episode. Woo. Um, Transformers. Oh. <laughs> Transformers! Oh, yes! That's what I was looking for. <laughs> <laughs> Why? Okay, right on time. Right on cue. <laughs> Why? Why, did, why did these particular robots make you think of Transformers? We talk about like automatons. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, I totally see it. I totally see it. That's literally the only reason. Just like name association. <laughs> Wait, they are called automatons. In Transformers, right? Decepticons and Automatons? Autobots. Autobots, damn it. Oh, wow. <laughs> I, I, I thought I made the greatest <laughs> connection of literature in history for a second. I thought I figured it out. <laughs> damn, all right. I had a thing with one of my um, classes in school. Like, instead of being like, quiet, be quiet, be quiet, I would just say Autobots, and they'd say, roll out, and then be quiet. That is so cute. <laughs> yeah. Nice. High school students did this? Yeah, you know, I threw out a that's couple so where like we could do different calls and responses and that's the one that they liked the most, so. Damn it, I, I need to teach my boys that. Uh, some of my boys do, uh, do say stuff from like Japanese TV shows, but I don't understand it. Some I was gonna them. ask you if you know of any, um, well, specifically, I know someone who's in a, a J-pop band. Yeah, have you heard of Psychic Fever? <laughs> Psychic Fever? Let me look it up. Not a sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Not a sponsor. Not a sponsor. <laughs> Definitely a friend of the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like no. But wouldn't it be funny if Jimmy? All, like, <laughs> all my students talk about like we got a fresh. Yeah, I don't know this band, but ooh. So there's Sam and Jimmy. Sam is the one I know. Yeah. Uh, okay. He yeah. looks like he plays piano really emotionally. I like it. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, this is this is J pop as shit. I like that. This proper J pop. Bro, it's like a machine here, man. It's wild, man. Are they automatons? Like, yo, yes. J-pop boys are not human. I don't think. I don't think they are. I don't think they sleep. I'm not sure if they eat. Automatons. <laughs> but we have 16 subscribers now. What? Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. All right, bro. I I think we made it. It's not the I'm proud of us. A good a good 16. Yeah, it's not bad. We love every single one of you, 16 people. All of them. And All maybe of you 17 guys. later? 17 maybe. people. Seven. Yeah. 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 Big hearts. Yes. You can let in 17 yeah. or 18. Yeah, I could make a 17th account. Let's <laughs> see. <laughs> 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 uh. can, can we actually look at our subscribers? I can only see people who've subscribed publicly, which um, I don't really like know what the difference is, but um, oh. it's only like some of our accounts that I can see. Right on. So it must be a setting that you click, but. 
fresh, 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 fresh. Well, you, 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 sixteen people should comment and, and like and like and, and subscribe. subscribe again. Yeah, make <laughs> it again. Follow them around, please. Tell your friends yes. to subscribe and yeah. learn. Learn with us. <laughs> make your shots. Then it'll be our friends <laughs> teaching your friends, teaching their friends. Right. Friends all the way down. <laughs> all friends. I'm, I'm just happy Aunt Jody watched it, to be honest with you. She loves them and she loves you. Oh my Actually, god. Actually, she's, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> she's a sweet pudding pie. 43.